Want to know how to spy on your users and get some analytics out of your Xamarin Forms application? Come check out this video. Now for this one, we need to start with a little bit of initial setup. Um, we need to do that in the App Center portal. So go over to appcenter.ms. I'm sure you can figure out how to set up your account. Um, so when we do, then you will get here on this landing page where we need to add our new app. So let's do that straight away, add new app. And here is a couple of things that we need to fill out. I will tell you a little bit about that. Let's just start with the name and we'll go to analytics, um, sample, there we go. And here underneath you have, I'm gonna skip over the release time it's optional you can kind of say like hey alpha beta enterprise whatever it's just kind of a label that you can um, know this app by um, and and here we have the OS right so you can specify iOS Android Windows Mac OS TV OS or even something custom um, because you know you can interact with this this is just a bunch of rest API's basically so if you have another platform that you want to support just figure out the um, rest API endpoints that are there and you can interact with that as long as you have the um, kind of the eight app ID that we're going to see in a little bit. Um, I'm just gonna stick with iOS and then also you can specify the platform down here. So you can have also native Objective-C, React Native, Cordova, um, and of course Xamarin, which is what we're going to see today. So also the platform doesn't really matter. So let's click Xamarin. Um, what you might see in this, if you're going to work with this, um, which is kind of funny if you're looking at it from a Xamarin Forms perspective, is that you will have to create separate apps for iOS and Android or maybe Windows. Um, because you have to specify the OS here, right? Um, I mean, technically, you could get all the data inside of one app if you if that's what you want here by just specifying one OS and use that key for all the platforms. Um, but you know, it could be nice also for the reporting purposes to have all the data in separate kind of apps. That's totally up to you. So let's add a new app right here. And then you can see you will get automatically this overview on how to get started for both Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. So you can do it for all the things. I can't emphasize this enough. Um, so if we look at the kind of the instructions for Xamarin Forms, um, it's slightly different than for Xamarin. Um, and what you want to do is basically install the NuGet package, um, add the right usings, add the right um, app ID right here, and um, you're ready to go basically. Now, App Center is more than just the analytics that I'm going to show you today. You can see here on the left, build, test, distribute, diagnostics, analytics. Um, please let me know in uh, the comments down below if you want to see anything more about App Center. Um, for instance, the crash management, which is really cool as well. But I'm going to stick for with the analytics right now. So I'm just gonna skip over these instructions right here. The main thing to remember here is to uh, that you need to get this little piece of initialization code or at least the app ID from right here. Um, and also, if you're going to do this for UWP and Android, create those UWP and Android apps and just swap out the UWP and the Android keys right here with the keys that you get from those pages. Now, with that in mind, let's skip over to Visual Studio and see how to actually implement this. Okay, here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. On the left, you can see it, a file new Xamarin Forms application out of the box, freshly opened. Here it is, uh, a bunch of XAML. You can see it on the right running on the iOS simulator and I didn't do anything here yet. So let's just start up this App Center goodness. Um, the first thing, of course, we need to do is update the title right here. So let's make this analytics. Um, sample, but then kind of spelled the right way, right? Analytics, there we go. Um, analytics sample, boom, whenever we save that, it updates the title automatically um, on our running application by Hot Reload works on simulator, Android emulator, and on physical devices, which is really cool. Um, now I've copied that little piece of code that we just had to remember from the App Center portal. So let's go over to our solution. Actually, we need to start with installing the NuGets first. So let's right click on our solution and say manage NuGet packages. And then whenever you search for App Center, a bunch of packages will actually come up. Um, so here we have kind of like the base App Center package, which has some common um, code. Um, here we have it specific for crashes, analytics, distribute, and some other things as well. Um, we're gonna stick with the analytics, and that will automatically bring in the App Center common package as well. So let's just do add package. We are going to have to select all three platforms, or more if you have even more, because it also has some um, specific code to those platforms. So you really want to um, add it to 
all of the platforms right here. Click OK. We're going to have to um, agree to the license right here. So make sure you read it and then accept it. Um, and then we wait for the packages to be added. And then from there, I copy the code from that App Center portal um, to actually do the initialization code. So let's just go over to that. Again, I'm going to go to the solution. Um, and this, for Xamarin Forms, you have to do it in your shared code, so in the shared library. If you're doing this for regular traditional Xamarin, then you might have to do it in like the um, platform specific projects. But for Xamarin Forms, we can do it in the shared layer. So let's go over to our app, XAML.cs. And here in our on start, we are going to initialize these analytics right here. So this is literally the pasted code from um, the portal. And there is something weird in here. Well, actually not something weird, but something that we don't need because this also initializes the crashes, which we are not going to show in this video. So let's just remove that. And then you can still see a couple of red squigglies. Um, so to solve those, let's just let IntelliSys help us. Click on the little light bulb and then say using Microsoft.AppCenter. And for the analytics one, we also need to do that. So using Microsoft App Center Analytics, it will add the usings here, right here at the top. And now everything looks okay. So what you do with this is you're gonna say, hey, this App Center service is going to start on my device, on my app. You'll have to use this um, app ID so that it knows where to send the data to on the App Center services. Um, and here you're going to say, hey, I want to initialize the analytics service. And if you want to add more, like I said, um, you can just do type of, and then you want to have the crashes in here, for example, if you want to add the crashes as well, but you have to add the crashes nuget package for that. So that's something for another video. Let me know down in the comments below if that is something that you want to see. Um, now, this is all we need to do to set things up and make it work, actually. Now that we have this in place, we can identify um, analytics events that you want to track. So let's go back to our main page dot example. And what I'm going to do is remove all the labels right here. And I'm going to add one button. There we go with the text. Uh, click me. Yes. And a clicked handler. Um, let's just generate that for us closing tag. And now we have this button, you can see with hot reload, it's already showing up, it doesn't do anything yet. Um, so let's implement this button. And let's get some other tracking events in here. So we go to our solution, the main page example, main page example dot CS. Um, and now we see our button clicked. And again, we also need to add here the using Microsoft dot app center dot analytics. And now we can start tracking events. So if we do analytics dot um, you, you have a, a couple of things here. You, so you can also see if it's is enabled, yes or no, or you can set is enabled, yes or no, um, which is kind of important because, you know, local laws, um, all those kinds of privacy things these days, you probably want to have some kind of method to turn this tracking off or on. Um, so that's also an important thing, right? Please let your users know that you're doing this. Um, be transparent about what data you're tracking um, so that you're not, you know, sending all kinds of weird data because if the, users lose trust in your application, they're going to uninstall it, never use it again. And that's in the best case scenario. Maybe they're going to put it on Twitter being retweeted by thousands of people. And suddenly you will have all kinds of lawsuits and whatnot. So be very transparent about what you're doing here and careful about the data that you're actually sending back to your servers. Um, okay, so having that said, a little warning here, um, um, be sure to do the is enabled, um, make sure there's an option for the user to actually opt out or maybe better opt into the analytics. Um, but when you do, you can just do the track event. And with the track event, at the very simplest form, you can track um, an event by just specifying a name. So um, button clicked, there we go. And whenever we do that, it will just say, hey, this event happened basically, and you will get some extra data. We'll see that in the App Center portal in a little bit. Uh, but what you can also do is specify extra uh, property. So if we do comma, we see that we can also do a dictionary of string string with all kinds of properties, which is basically a key value um, string thing right here. So we can also say new uh, dictionary string string. And let's put something in here. So this is kind of like the short format to create a new dictionary. Um, I'm forgetting one right here, a little angle bracket, there we go. And um, so let's just put in here how many times the user clicked on the button, which is, you know, something that you could track. Um, so let's create a int um, i is zero. And here we're going to say, um, uh, 
times clicked, which is going to be our key. And then here we can say I plus plus dot to string. Um, so it has to be all string values, right? So now each time we click, we will get an event button clicked and we will get um, a property that will tell us how many times the button has clicked. Also, let's see if our user even opened this page. Well, they're gonna open it because it's the main page, but maybe if you're in some kind of navigation scenario where you want to track like, hey, how many times is this user going to land on a specific page? Um, you can just here do this track event and we can say um, page opened. Um, and we can say um, um, page and we can say name of uh, main page so that we know that this is the page that we open. Maybe you want to wrap this in some kind of service of your own that makes it a little bit easier to use. Um, and then you can just see like, hey, or maybe you, you're using this in a base page, right? So um, that maybe makes more sense. A base page where you inherit from, and this way you just have to write this line of code once, and you can automatically track um, where the user is going through the pages in your application. I mean, how you implement the actual events, that is totally up to you, depending on what you want to track and how you want to track it. But this is basically how to do it. Um, so let me save this and I need to stop and restart the application real quick um, because you know I changed some code. So we need to redeploy the application for that to be picked up. Um, and then nothing really is going to be visible here in our application because it's all happening in the background. But then we're gonna hop over back to App Center and see how the data kind of comes in. So we're waiting here for the application to come back up and then the track event should already see like, hey, the page opened, so that happened. Um, and now let's click this button a couple of times. So let's just click, 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 click. Um, we clicked it a couple of times. Let me actually stop and, and restart it again, just so you can see some kind of different data coming in here as well. Um, and kind of like this is also important, right? That the user is not going to know this. Um, and um, that's also the, the code for the App Center has been designed to not crash your application. So whenever something comes up, whenever you don't have an internet connection, um, it will actually cache the logs for up to 10 megabytes. And then whenever the internet connection is back, it will send that over to App Center um, for you automatically in the background. You don't need to worry about that. So that is um, pretty amazing if you ask me. Uh, but this code has been designed to never crash your application. Um, so it all runs in the background and um, yeah, it should work automatically without you having to do anything besides tracking these events. So let me click this button a couple of more times. Here we go. And um, let's just hop over back now to the App Center portal and see what this actually did. Okay, back in App Center. Um, this is exactly where we left off. I even selected the text here that I actually copied. Um, so let's go over here on the left to analytics. And here you can see that we have kind of a couple of more categories, overview, events, and log flow. I'll go over these um, very briefly. Um, and here at the top, you can see a very important note as well. Learn more with application insights. So what is really cool that you can also set up um, a, a sync to application insights to Azure application insights, um, where you have more query capabilities and more data visualization options. Um, but even more so the data retention on App Center is I think at most like 30 days or 90 days. Uh, but if you stream it into Azure, then not only will you have the extra query cap capabilities, but you can also also keep the data there for a longer period of time. Um, so, but let me dismiss this for right now. That's something for another day. Um, here you can automatically see in the overview, like how many active users you had. That's something that you didn't need to do. Um, it will automatically see like how many times a unique user has started your application. And here you can see kind of like the trends daily, weekly, monthly, and you can see how many users actually did that. Now, um, this is of course, you know, very short lived. Um, I'm only putting the data in there now, but if you um, get more data, then you can also see daily sessions per user. So how how many times did a user actually start your application? Um, you can see how long those sessions were, so the session duration, um, and you can see which devices your application is used on. So now, right now, you can see the simulator on um, OS iOS 14.5, um, but especially if you add Android here in the mix, then you will see a variety of Android um, devices in here with a um, big number of different OS versions, probably. But you can.
can see like, hey, if I want to make this update for a very specific Android version, is that worth it? Is that um, for only one user or is that for 10,000 users? That, you know, based on that information, you can see um, how high priority a bug should be, for instance. Um, also, you can see from which countries um, your application is used, which languages are set on the user's device, um, and how many active users there are per version. So if you're releasing multiple versions of your app, you can see how the adoption rate is for the new versions. Maybe people are hesitant to update to a new version, and then you have to figure out why and make that better. So this is already a lot of data that you can use, and you didn't even have to implement anything for this besides just initializing the App Center API. That is pretty cool. Now for the events, that's maybe the even more interesting than all of this. So here you can see the events. You can see right now the data hasn't come in yet. So let me refresh that in a little bit. Um, but if you go in here, you can get some instructions on how to actually you know, track that event. But I've already just shown you. So um, let me go over to the lock flow first and then come back and see if there's actually um, already some data in here that we can actually show you. So the lock flow is actually even cooler. Um, here you can see if we go over there, it will say await data from your app. Um, and you can connect to this and really get near real-time data from any application. So this is basically the log, the events coming in. And this can be really useful in kind of the scenario where you might have a bug that is hard to reproduce. Um, or, you know, I don't know, something else that you want to real life track some, um, maybe you're doing some user study and a user is going through the app and you want to follow along what they're doing. Um, then whenever the application is being run and um, they are going through the application, your events are coming in here um, in real time and you can see what is going on. Now, let's quickly go back to the events. And we can now see that our button clicked actually came in. So that is pretty cool. Uh, and whenever we drill down in this button clicks, you can see it already happened 29 times by one user. Um, and here's also you can see trends. So the user change where you can see like how many users actually click this button. Uh, maybe you can do some AB testing with this. And whenever we click this, you can even get more data. And then here you can see it's just one user and you can see the 100% the, the of all users. So if we would have more users, you can see uh, what percentage of your users is actually doing the button clicked. Um, you can see the count that the count that is um, um, total for this event. So for the button clicked, that name is kind of like the unique, the unique identifier for um, this count right here. Then you can get the, the count per user, the count per session, um, and also really much down here, you can see kind of like a list of the properties. So um, in this case, the properties is times clicked. You can see that name coming back here. And then the times clicked, I did that little counter, the I++. So um, in this case, three, one, and five, and, and all the way down to two, um, you can see that this is like the most um, clicked thing, the most used property. Um, and down here, there was this first time where I clicked really multiple times, up to 12 times, and that only happened once. So, you know, the, the data here is not really that great, but if you define the right data that you want to track, this is a really valuable tool to track your users and see how they are using your app. And that is how super easy it is to use App Center and add that to your application. Now, this is not even specific to Xamarin Forms or Xamarin. You can also do it for Cordova, React Native, Objective-C, all the native platforms. So that is super duper cool if you ask me. Um, so you can still use this tool even if you're not doing Xamarin or Xamarin Forms. Um, now, I already mentioned this during the video, but please be very transparent and careful with the data that you gather from your users because you can put everything in here, right? Everything that the user is entering here, you can put that in here and send it over back to App Center. Um, please be very transparent and careful with the data that you actually do. Use it to uh, make your app better, but not to actually spy on your users, although that is something that I might like to make this pun on, of course, with this video, but please don't actually do that. Um, for the rest, please like this video if you've actually liked it. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions about what happened here um, or if you want to see anything more from App Center. Other than that, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.